Welcome back, Red Spotters, and the show here on the Red Spotlight Podcast. I'm your host, Alexis J. Soto, and I'm joined today by the one and only Ms. Alexis Moreno. Alexis, are you still what would be considered living? Yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it that. I mean, the heart's beating, right? So I guess that um, should signify something. This is going to be episode 257. Now, full disclosure, as we usually you know, want to be honest with you people, we had a whole show planned and everything because there had been some seismic news to the film industry these last few days. Unfortunately, however, Peter had to cancel, and I know that he had a lot to say about what we were going to discuss. So... We'll postpone that for next week. But in, you know, the absence of this whole show that we had planned, Alexis and I are going to do what Kyle and I usually do on these shows. And that is, we're going to capture a conversation that is free flowing and completely uh, limit free. And we're going to see wherever the hell this thing takes us. I don't know where this is going to take us. Um, we have a lot of full-blown, overly long conversations that maybe at one point we should put a microphone in front of us and see where it goes, <laughs> and I guess this is going to be it. Um, so yeah, this is the show today. Alexis, tell me, um, how how are you? <laughs> it's like, I really want to know. Uh, I, I, I think that... I have a tendency sometimes, especially by these these intros, to um, come off as like literally on the edge of losing it. Um, I feel that way sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, although I'm mostly like completely am in a position where I can't complain at all. I mean, really, I, I have, may may be among the more more comfortable positions of the entire panel. But I mean, that doesn't mean that I'm not prone to any kind of psychic breaks or schisms. Anyway, I'm 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 totally okay. Are you? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm better, better than last it's month. It's been a month. <laughs> it's been oh, <laughs> oh. Uh... <laughs> you want to elaborate on that? The day-to-day -day life that is Alexis Moreno. Um. Okay, so I lost my job. <laughs> okay, starting off the, the bar really low. <laughs> you lost your job. Yes. Um, basically, uh, I, I think I've mentioned it before. I don't know if I've mentioned it here. On this podcast? Yeah, like I feel like I've talked about it. Like I've mentioned it like at one point, but I, I worked at the Disney store. Um, I mean, the dream for me. <laughs> right. I mean, without, if you know of, me. of course, if you know Alexis and if you've been listening to her for any number of time, this is, of course, the co host of the Fantasy Fair podcast, the most magical podcast on earth. Kyle paid me to say that, by the way. Um, and of course, <laughs> uh, you know, Alexis, her debut on any podcast was here on Red Spotlight so many years ago. Five years. It's been five yeah, years. Can dude. you believe that? It's been five like, years. Like almost to the day or to the day. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think legitimately. Actually, I was going to tell you that. We should have done like an anniversary one because that's like, well, that's a, that's a, what's it called? Um, what's that am I trying to say? An, uh, a benchmark? Step. Yes, benchmark. Five years. Yeah. Well, I guess this could be like part one of that celebration while we talk about, yeah. you know, the, the occasion. Well, it's kind of sad, though. <laughs> Why is it kind of sad? Because <laughs> I started off talking about Disney and now I just got fired. Well, here's what we'll do. We'll get the sad stuff out of the way and then we can commence with like, uh, you know, uh, recalling what that time was five years ago. And then at some point. Um, in the next month, we'll get Kyle on here and then we can have like an anniversary, an official anniversary episode 
um yeah for you know that'd be kind of nice that would be and it's crazy to think about that but let's get your sad stuff out of the way first because it is depressing (laughs) (laughs) so yeah it was the dream alexis is uh you know that is her dream and you know and it crapped out thanks to covid and and, and donald trump so i blame them and you think anyone should too (laughs) <laughs> uh but yeah i have been working there for the last two years two <sighs> years two, like a month away from two wow. years wow <laughs> wow um yeah like i think exactly a month away from two years because my last day was on the 25th and i believe i started on the 25th of august <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was such a blow uh, when I heard the news. I can only imagine how you felt, especially since, like, you were under the impression that you were reopening and then at the last minute it got... So, basically, I mean, ever since... I mean, yeah, so March, everything Disney closed, um, you know, the parks, all the stores, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, everything else. I mean, kind of everything else in the U.S. closed, but whatever. Um, and I mean, during this whole time, I, that was always in the back of my head. Like, what if we don't reopen? You know, I, I would have these conversations with my brother, um, that at least I thought like from a business standpoint, it made sense if Disney stores go first because Disney was losing a lot of money, is losing a lot of money. So, yeah, like, that was always in the back of my head. But I also just, like, didn't want to think of that because... It's like thinking (laughs) about death. It's like, it's not, it's not good for the soul, much less the mind, to think about those things. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But, yeah, so, um... I was getting texts, you know, we're so close to opening, blah, blah, blah. And then one day I get a call and I don't answer. Oh. <laughs> I I let it go to voicemail and then I hear the voicemail. Because I if I don't have the number, I usually don't answer. <laughs> and so... I mean, um, I think that's like most people these days, right? Yeah. If I don't know who it is, I don't answer it. Yeah. <laughs> cuz and cuz I I also like don't know a lot of people and I'm always just like who has my number. <laughs> 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 and so, um so yeah, I get the I get a call and but by, by this point I was waiting for the call. Like I mean, I had been waiting for the call the whole time, but by this point it was like Okay, like, any day, any minute, like, we're gonna get the call to open back up. Like, that was my mindset at the time. Um, and so, I hear the voicemail, and it's, uh, it's somebody from Disney, and they're like, oh, can you give us a call back, blah, blah, blah. Um, I hear the voicemail walking into Walmart. And I'm with my mom. Oh, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. You're really painting a scene here. And it's really depressing if Walmart of uh, all places are going to get this news. on the way to getting a birthday cake for my grandpa because we were going to go see him for his birthday. <sighs> so I'm walking into Walmart. Um, I hear the voicemail, all that. I run up to my mom because I had also been telling her like, oh, like, we're gonna get the call like any any moment at any moment at this point. I go running to her, like not even running, like jumping to her, and I'm just like, I got the call, like we're gonna get we're gonna open, blah blah blah. Oh no. Well this <laughs> just this got worse. This is so much worse than I had thought it was gonna go. Okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> You're really painting a visual here. Um and it's making just the situation just even more sad. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I, yeah, so I'm all excited. I, like, I'm in her face yelling at her, like, I'm getting the call, blah, blah, blah. I just need to call back and see what they tell me, like, 
for what's going to happen next. So I call the number and it's like, like, it's not like my store manager, but it's like a manager manager, like higher than her. And and he's obviously like not happy, uh, like, you know, you can tell in someone's tone of voice when they're like. Yes. In a good place or a bad place. Yes. Which also, like, I feel like that was really stupid of me. Because, like, I feel like if we were going to open, my manager would be the one to call me. So that was, you know, stupid on my part. There was some, like, hints in your direction that you weren't looking at. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Pretty big red flags going up. (laughs) (laughs) So... He answers the phone, and he just tells me, you know, unfortunately, we're not going to be reopening your location, blah, blah, blah. Uh, At this point, I am actually inside of the store, walking around in a circle, because I don't know what to do. (laughs) My mom had walked away from me. I'm by myself. I'm like... I, like, I don't even know how to react. He's, like, asking me questions. He's, like, like, by the end, he's, like, do you have any questions? And I'm just, like, like, words were not coming out of my mouth. It's like, uh, <laughs> you were literally sucker punched. And you can't even, <laughs> you're trying to come up for air. And it's just not coming. Yep. <laughs> That's kind of what you're describing it to be like. I can't it, it, imagine yeah. that. I mean, they're the, the worst places to get such, like, shattering news at a fucking Walmart. And, like, there's, like, so many people around you, and it's, like... Like, like people are watching me, because I'm just literally walking in a circle. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't want to be, like, standing. Like, I, I was just... Everything was just, like... I was processing everything, but, like, I didn't want to stand still, because, I don't know. I don't know. Like, (laughs) it was weird. Um, So, yeah, he just, you know, he gives me the news, um, and then I hung up, and I just, like, I start crying, and I'm, I'm looking for my mom, and then she... She sends me a text and she's like, where are you? I'm like paying already. And I go, I go up to her and (laughs) she like, she was at the register, like she was paying. Oh no. And I I tell her and I just start, like, I lose it. And the cashier is just like looking at me like, what's going on? (laughs) Literally the worst that could happen at that moment happened. I was like, no, this girl is not about to tell me that she literally like lost her shit in front of the cashier. I feel like she just didn't know what to say. And she just like hugged me. And then we go back into the car. And I at this point, I didn't want to talk about it. Because like I said, I was on my way to my grandpa's house. But then she brings it up. And then I have to tell the whole story again. And like I don't I don't want to, you know? <laughs> I didn't want it to be real. Yeah. And so I had to obviously I had to tell him. And we get to my grandpa's house and they bring it up again. <laughs> and literally at this point I'm just like I'm holding back like everything. Like I'm just Staring at my phone, <laughs> waiting to see if anybody was going to text me because I have like, I was part of management. So like we had a group chat and stuff. And I knew that he had told the rest of management, but I didn't know if we were allowed to talk about it yet. Yeah. And then I get a text and it's just like us. Well, it's not us. It's uh, they all just send like crying stuff, like crying emojis and stuff. They're just like, we need to, we need to have a call tomorrow, blah, 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 or like the next day. And, um, you know, they're all just like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm just like here, like crying, like hyperventilating, like, (laughs) I don't know what's going on. And then, um, 
the assistant manager, she sends me, a, like, a, another text, and she's just like, this is nuts, like, this is crazy, <sighs> and I'm just like, I'm at my grandpa's house, like, I really, like, I don't know what to do, I can't, like, think about this right now, and she's like, you need to let it out, and I'm like, I can't, like, I can't do this right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's so it- bad, like, it, I was literally in the worst spot <laughs> to get this information. It just seems as if, like, your grandpa's house is the last place you needed to be at that moment, considering all that was going in your mind. <laughs> like, literally, I had not left my house, and then, like, the moment I leave my house, this <laughs> is when this happens. Wow. <laughs> it was, it was crazy. It, I just got, I just remember getting home and just crying myself to sleep, and then the next day... I was just in bed all day. Like, (laughs) I had absolutely no motivation to do anything. Like, I, like, my brain just, like, wasn't working. (laughs) I may have one or two of those experiences. I mean, particularly to, like, waking up and, like, having no motivation to do anything because of just this overwhelming sense of dread you know it's like you kind of lose any kind of uh purpose when things like that just happen to you uh yeah i know i mean a lot of what you and your co-workers are describing about what it felt like you mean a lot of a lot of these things just being uprooted and uh having no idea what to do next like the closest thing that i can come to understanding what that feels like was a very in my case severe anxiety attack when i first moved like officially moved moved uh to uh, the washington dc area and I thought it was like one of those situations where you 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 thought that you had everything like locked down, good to go for like the next few days, and yeah. everything just became exponentially difficult, a, more than I was anticipating. It didn't occur to me that I would have any kind of like an emotional toll because of just being over there, but mm-hmm. I was in one of those situations where like I. Nothing seemed to be going my way for like the first like two or three days. Um, things were like stressing me out to a point where I, because at that point I still was kind of on the fence of whether or not this was even right for me or what am I mm-hmm. even doing here? Coupled with, I don't want to be here really because I had it so good where I was. And yeah. also just being afraid of me being in over my head of even belonging in this group of like talent that they had gotten for that program. And so yeah. there would just be sporadic parts of the day where I would kind of lose my shit and for no reason just like just start crying over it over anything and i remember i think it was well it was a tough morning i don't know why the first day i was going to actually trek to the university and it was a bit of a ways away from where i was located and i hadn't gone that route before and that was a rude awakening that i wasn't expecting i woke up Mm -hmm. just like shivering because of all the damn anxiety going on in my mind and then i i get on this subway and it's longer than i expected and then when i get to the location i still have to take a bus to get to the damn campus and it was all so new and i was on the precipice of just completely breaking down and um i don't know i i don't know why it what exactly triggered it i think it's a combination of all those things I've always had a self-esteem issue, even though a lot of people are so, like, sure of themselves that I'm sure of myself. I know, like, <laughs> no, seriously, people... No, yeah, yeah. And, you know, people assume 
a lot of things about me that just come easy to me. People think that I have it all figured out. People think just because like, uh, I guess how, you know, my personality is and how I guess I'm considered well-spoken. People just naturally assume that I have like this confidence in myself that, you know, I can do anything, but I, I feel like I'm a really fragile person. And it takes a lot to admit that, but I think I really am that way. A lot, I get, I get mm -hmm. discouraged easily, and I often depend on others around me to kind of keep me motivated. And so that was a situation where I was just completely alone, like yeah. entirely alone. And that's when I, you know, began to break down. It wasn't until I began making friends that it turned around for me completely. Because then I had people in my life that I could trust and that I could, you know, be a part of my life and everything. But it is crippling having that sense of anxiety on you. The other time where it was difficult to just – this was like um, – this wasn't a situation where like nothing changed for me personally. It was just like a, a psychological thing. And I know that um, Peter and I had the exact same experience – um, it was after election night, 2016. <laughs> I, oh God, that, I, I'm never going to forget at least that 48 hour period because it was just so shocking. And, but after the shock of it wore off, I woke up the next day and I had some place to be. I had to go meet my professor so we can like, um, make progress on where I was with my final term paper and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. I woke up. I I don't know if it was just my my mindset or the fact that the room was completely like, you know, the blinds were on and everything. It just looked dark. And I remember just like waking up and I think it it took me like 10 minutes to to make up my mind about whether or not I even wanted to get out of bed that day. <laughs> no, for real cuz it felt like the world had ended. I mean, some people like laughed at people like me for having that reaction, right? Well, 160,000 of those people are dead in the ground right now. So I don't know if that, you know, that was a, a right to laugh about that. But hey, that's just the reality. <laughs> that's just the reality. And there'll be plenty more where that came from. Thank you, President Trump. Um, but anyway, it did feel like the world had ended. And I just had, it felt like my whole life was just like, I had a, it was a fantasy to me that I had a little bit of a trajectory about where my career would go. And then it all just kind of like came crashing down. Um, I guess it helped. I don't know a little bit when my professor met with me and he said that, you know, I'm, I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> I was there <laughs> during nine 11. This feels worse than nine 11. Um, and that was like, Oh, okay. That's a, That's what I needed to hear today. Okay. Um, so what you're describing sounds a lot what I went through, although in both of those situations, I got out of bed that day, but holy fuck, that, oh my God, that is terrible. That's, I mean, and you, um, you, uh, I think you left, you had to go on a little retreat, didn't you, that week? <laughs> yeah, I ended up, I ended up just leaving my house because I, I don't know, I just, you needed a break. It was too much at that point. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to be clear, I mean, I feel all of us have that instinct sometimes when, like, things get too heavy where you're at. Like, a change of scenery can do a lot for your mindset. I really do feel that way. I know that we talked about this last week with Kyle. Before he left, he's in Idaho right now. He has a two-week-long excursion in Idaho um, with his family up there. And um, it does the mind a lot of good to just get out. You get that sense of escaping. I know, like, we don't want to, like, encourage, like, running away from your problems. Yeah. Uh, but in the, <laughs> it helps a little bit to just kind of, like, get it off your mind. And, and one of the things to get it off your mind is to just leave that particular location because everything is just reminding you of like this terrible, terrible thing. And it's not as if like anybody here, like I think we've all been in that position where we have to like leave for a couple of days to get ourselves better. Of course we come back. We don't like run away forever and ever and ever. Yeah. But 
I often do find that in all of our cases, um, taking a little bit of a break can do you a lot of good. And I think it did you a lot of good. I mean, it did because I I went to my best friend's house Mm -hmm. who I hadn't seen since New Year's, I think. And she lives in Tatooine, so that's a long ways away. (laughs) (laughs) And so, you know, I was there with them. And I mean, I obviously like I tell them everything because they knew what was going on. And and then the, them themselves were, um, what? Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Whatever. I mean, grammaticals, um, whatever. I mean, them themselves. <laughs> them themselves. They <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, they, you know, also were telling me, like, no, like, you should come over here. Like, just, you know, you, like, need to calm down. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it, it did help a lot. Um. It was just, it was a super weird week. A lot. It's a really, it was, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was really a lot. Like, so after that call, so I was going to start applying to jobs anyways. Right. Because I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm running out of money. <laughs> at this point, it had been at least, what, four <clears throat> months off. Yes. So it. Yes. Um, so it had, it had been some time, you know, and, uh, yeah, I needed to pay bills. <laughs> so I was going to start applying anyways. This kind of bumped it up a notch, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started applying, um, cause I think that was also the week that we talked about the princess and the frog thing, wasn't it? This was early July. Think about a month or so ago. This had to have been so, like 4th of July weekend or the weekend after yeah. that. So that same day that we recorded Princes and the Frog, which I believe was also that same week. That's right. After I, I hung up with you guys is when I started applying for jobs. Right. Because I was like, okay, like, I I don't know. I also felt the need that, like, I needed to do something about it also. Right. Like, I, 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 I don't know. It was just like. A thing <laughs> i don't know like i said my brain was just like not working well part of you <laughs> seems like it was then at that point because like i think you had this resistance in you to kind of be proactive about the situation like you know it's not like you had to just take things down like that like a hundred percent like i think part of you knew that all right well i'm not gonna be over this for a long time but i know i need to have a at least a short term solution to this, and the and the short term solution is I need money. It's plain and simple, and so to buy stuff. Well, <laughs> we money, whatever it is you do, whatever it is you do with it, you need the money, so you need to find a job anyway. But you know, um, I don't know if you ever doubted yourself in that area because you've always been, I think, to my sometimes it kind of aggravates me how good you are, how good you are just getting a job like nothing. Nothing. Like I've never seen somebody that just like I mean, I don't know how extensive your resume is. I haven't seen your resume, but like you have a lot of experience with retail. And now granted there were some positions you applied for that you got that weren't retail, but putting putting that to the side and some it would require education. I feel like it's not even retail, I think just customer service in general. Right, right, right. Um but yeah, like I ended up applying Again, this is the same week that I got the call. Yeah. <laughs> I that I was closing. I applied. The next day, they called me for an interview. And I'm just like, I can't do this right now. <laughs> like, as I'm leaving to my friend's house, uh-huh. they called me for an interview. <sighs> and I'm just like, I, first of all, like, I didn't have time to prepare. I didn't really know where I applied to. <laughs> I literally, I don't remember what I said. I don't know how that they wanted me for a second interview. And I went in for the second interview (laughs) and I ended up getting it. And although, you know, and I'm not complaining. Like, obviously, I'm very grateful that I got the job and everything. But I also feel 
like I I mean I guess because I started like not that long ago either but like time to like kind of process everything you that, know what I mean that um yeah so like the good aspect of of uh from what you just said was okay you have a next thing lined up however from an emotional standpoint, you haven't been given the time to even process the loss that you were just handed. Yeah. And I feel like, like, <clears throat> it's, like, dumb or, like, maybe people who listen might think it's dumb. Like, okay, it's just, like, a retail job. Like, it's a mall job. You know what I mean? Mm. But, like, it was a lot more than that. Yeah. At least to me. It meant a lot more than that to you. People, I, th- I don't think anybody would be able to understand how much it meant to you besides you. You know, I, I, I mean, yeah. you shouldn't have to feel in a position where you feel, I know you've, you've had some experiences, but you shouldn't have to feel like you're in any kind of position to explain yourself. You were so close with the people there. And that I think anyone can understand that when, at least I can definitely understand that when you grow close with people around you in that kind of environment as I had with others of mine whether it had been in a living situation in a work situation or in a school situation there are so many people that come across my mind right now who I dearly miss and who I wish would I I didn't have I didn't wish those times would end you know there were so many so many groups of people that meant so much to me and I I always dreaded the ending of those particular situations, whether it was um, my first year at UCSD, uh, my first real job at Starbucks, um, the Capitol Hill internship, the broadcast journalism program. There was a lot of people who I really felt at home with who meant much to me really meant a lot to me and who i really miss and who i don't think i in some cases i may never see again and that makes me sad because they were so good to me and i remember feeling a similar way in in a job that wasn't i think ripped away from me in the way that it was from you let's be fair that's kind of what (laughs) happened with you but I remember in a similar situation where I didn't want, and I told this to you, I didn't want to go. Yeah. I had other things to do that I chose to apply to and that I don't regret because I got to meet new people and I got to go to a different like scenery and everything. But it was mm-hmm. a situation where I didn't want to leave. Um, in, in my experience, I actually enjoyed being a barista at Starbucks. I actually enjoyed the atmosphere. Yeah. I enjoyed the people. And it didn't hit me until after I basically, um, you know, handed in my apron, even though I got to keep my apron. That's a tradition they have there, but whatever. <laughs> I walk away for the last time and I'm having to like, it kind of like you, it, it you have to like, it takes everything within you to just like not break down in public like that because like the of course the the cafe was in the center of a very like populous area of the campus it's a huge campus you see san diego you've been there it's so yeah. fucking big <laughs> and the last thing you want is to like be a pariah when like oh you're, you're like crying out of nowhere and all these people like looking at you but yeah. it um it's just one of those things like where you you don't really know how good you had until it's gone. Like, the thing is, like, how I said in the beginning, like, this, you know, it might be, like, a kid dream, you know, to, like, work for Disney or anything like that. But that's always been what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And this was, like, like, I obviously knew this is... This wasn't what where I was gonna stay at, but it was getting my foot in the door. It was a starting and, place. Yes, and I think the thing that hurts the most is that this was my second chance. 
my first job was at a Disney store. Um, I, I didn't end that. up staying. Yeah. I didn't end up staying. And so, you know, when I got the chance to come back, it was a different store. It wasn't the same one. Um, it, it meant a lot. Mm-hmm. And then also, like how you said, I, w- I am really close with the people that I worked with. Mm-hmm. But they're the only people that I know here. Yeah. I don't know anybody else, mm-hmm. you know? So it just, it sucks. Like, it really, really sucks. And you know, <sighs> oh my God, I, I honest to God, and I, I, I said this a few minutes ago, I don't have the slightest indication as to how long I would have lasted in that DC program if it weren't for all of the people around me who were going through the same thing as I was doing. You know, I mm-hmm. I was scared my first day walking into a room full of 30 plus people from all over the country. I was a little bit intimidated by some of them because I didn't know yeah. what, what what to expect. <laughs> I didn't know them. They're, they're so different. But when it came down to it, they they became part of an experience that to this day has been the most satisfying educational experience of my entire educational career because it was so communal it was so collaborative by design even to have Mm -hmm. to basically it, it forces you to make these kind of relationships and friendships with people that way you could better yourself and as a as a group even yeah. further to it and I mean, I like you in that area. They were the only people I knew. And they were the only people who I would, you know, otherwise have an excuse to go out and do all these things because of the occupation that that came with being a mm-hmm. quote unquote reporter and going on assignments. It gave us, it gave me personally an excuse to visit different parts of the, you know, area of, of the city and and mm-hmm. it, every week it would be a different event. I would go to a a puppy like social hour with like milkshake. It was a weird mi- combination of a milkshake bar with like these puppy like social mingling or whatever. I went to uh-huh. um a very popular like drag race on Halloween night. Oh um, yeah, you told me. There about was that. <laughs> so many fun. There was uh they have this wonderful um kite festival uh at the Washington Monument for the cherry blossoms. There's a wonderful pier there. There's so many different kinds of events that happen of different variety. You got to go to this um uh community in the area, Anacostia, and learn so much about the history there, about the river itself, the people that live there, the gentrification, um, and covering the fact that it was a food desert, at least uh, Ward 8 was a food desert, and what that was. Um, But the times that I wouldn't be doing that would be where I would go to the movies, which is also something else that I miss these days. I really do. <laughs> but um, usually that would just be a one-off on my own. You know, for what it was, I, 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 at that point, that became kind of like my thing to do. Yeah. But I don't know. I really don't know how fondly I would be looking back on it right now if it weren't for any of them. I really don't. It was, that was the kind of experience where like, I I wished not to like (laughs) throw shade at any of you guys, because you you mean a lot to me. Um, But in other kind of projects that I was involved with from a creative standpoint, like I had to go at it all alone. And it wasn't Mm -hmm. until like in recent years where I finally began to understand what it felt like to have like people behind you that got your back and help you. I had like my, I wanted to go cover Bernie Sanders's first campaign rally 
um, in Brooklyn, New York. We were in D.C. And the only way that I was going to be able to go there would be through a bus and not knowing I was afraid I would get on the wrong bus. I was afraid if I was even going to be in the right area. There were so many question marks about that. But my friend, mm -hmm. who I've mentioned on the show before, without even batting an eye, like, you know what? This is an opportunity for both you and I. Let me help you. I'll drive. Come stay over at my place. We'll go together. We'll cover the story together. And I, I couldn't believe how... And it happened within a matter of minutes, I think, when we like booked the bus and then we it was the day before we had decided to do this basically, mm -hmm. I think. So it came it came together like nothing. And it was something that I really, really wanted to you know, I love Bernie, you know, there's no secret there, but it was also a great like uh it was great potential, you know, going up there and covering that story. Um and people really were really taken with that news package that I was able to do. So I, uh, I, it was so great to have people like that surrounding you and it made you feel like, like you yourself were being enriched from that kind of experienced uh, experience. And you know, like, yeah. And I, I, not to say that you guys are like, aren't, I, I meant more about the BNC days where I felt like really alone with a lot of the mm -hmm. creative decisions. Because I had, you know, with the I beat, mean, yeah. it, it's like different because, you know, I feel like you choose your friends. Yeah. You don't choose, you know, the people that you work with. At least, like, typically. Unless, like, you know, you work by yourself or something. Yeah. Um. And so, yeah, like, to have people that you feel you make a connection with yeah. and like enjoy being around them and, not, and like enjoy working with them like everything like it's just a good relationship mm -hmm. it it means a lot and you know the crazy thing about all these people who i'm talking about i don't think we would be friends if we weren't forced to be together at that situation yeah we yeah. wouldn't re <laughs> And not that, like, we were only friends because of that. We became friends because we realized there were, like, we liked each other, each other generally. Uh -huh. And then you come to find out how much you have in common. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's kind of the, one of the, one of, in my, in my experience, one of the most gratifying things about life is just the surprises in the people you get to meet and finding out how much you have in common and how good that is to have that kind of an exposure to it. And you get to understand and you get to look a little bit through people and get to see a day in their life. I think that's that's a wonderful thing. I feel like if everybody kind of approached life in that situation, we wouldn't have as many problems as we do, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, and I mean, we were so different personalities, completely different personalities and yet we wouldn't be um we wouldn't have we wouldn't have had the opportunity to really know each other and like each other if it wasn't for that program mm -hmm. and so that's why i'm always going to be so grateful for that and the experiences i was able to do because of that um but with you guys like now like one of the things that i mentioned last week um to kyle and I think also to David was, you know, because, you know, with this podcast, with Red Spotlight and with Fantasy Fair and all of the stuff that we do, I mean, we do this for fun and we generally love to come on here and scream at you people who listen to us for why you're <laughs> wrong and, and all these different things. But what I really am so, like, content with is that a lot, if not all of the programming that we've been doing this year came from you guys it came from you guys as ideas peter the you know movies that left an impression on us the the, uh, the decade show we have future shows that are coming up uh uh that's going to circle around it's going to be themed around like theme parks more on that later when we get like official details on that um Kyle 
was the one that recommended like we needed to shake things up, like doing a month long Scorsese uh, theme. We'll be doing one with Guillermo del Toro later on in the year. Um, you and David with the Avatar uh, series, I think has been very, very good for us. I really, really love those shows. Because it got, I know it was like you guys is one of your favorite, like anything of all time. And as is the case with the rest of us. And so it was wonderful to reacquaint myself with that world and with those characters. And I couldn't have believed it had been over a decade since I saw Avatar The Last Airbender <laughs> when we did those episodes. Even with David, uh, when we're, we're we're doing these weekly recaps of of Agents of Shield, and like he's the only one of, of you guys that really get <laughs> like get my love for this show, and like as much as I love it, and how much as he loves it. But I've it's been so cathartic to be able to like experience these on a weekly basis and talk it over with him, especially now since it's ending. And so like it makes it easier to kind of go through that loss with you know when you're you, when yeah. you're experiencing it with somebody so you know never before has like these kind of podcast projects have has never has it felt so collaborative if anything maybe i'm the one who's slacking off because you guys are coming up with such great <laughs> ideas uh like it was you that like thought of like, oh, let's do ava duvernay like you you saw when they saw it when they see us and 13th we did an episode about that you felt very strongly about talking about um black lives matter and the situation with george floyd of course you know the the, the social unrest in this country and we went ahead and dived into it mm -hmm. like i really am just so happy like where we are with things right now and it's less about the podcast and more of like wow i this is I, I really love collaborating with people. I really, really love mm -hmm. it. I really love it. And um like back back to you into your situation, people take for granted, I think just including us, just about anything in life. And that's just the nature of human beings. But like there are so many reasons for why that loss was such a heavy toll on you. But don't underestimate them. And I would ask people to be understanding of, you know, the connections that you make, the real human connections that you make in a kind of position like that. And it, it, it became a home for you guys. And the home and the birthplace of your friendship and the fact that you were literally tearing it apart um, <laughs> probably wasn't... Um, it's kind of macabre, I think. You might want to a little bit, um, <laughs> um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? A little bit, um, wow, um, I'm, I'm blanking out here, but it was uh, a little dark. Dark a little bit, probably. Because <laughs> uh, you're, if, if you're basically not only like eulogizing like a dead family member, but you're also like dismembering it and sending off and like... <laughs> You know, putting it in like an ash fire and sending out the pieces where they need to go. It was a, it's a big thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, like you shouldn't have to feel minimized because it meant so much to you. Come on. But um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that you didn't know I had worked there before. I may have, but it, it it must have been a long time ago. We just mentioned, I think, uh, at the top of the show that, you know, this is basically five years now since we've been doing these podcasts. It's crazy to me how long it's felt like that it, it's actually been as long as five years. It's been, it's crazy because there's, so, there's yeah. so many experiences that come to mind. We've had so many conversations on and off the air. I'm sure you must have said that. Maybe you said that to me. Maybe I, I, I'll go back. Maybe and, I did it. I don't know. Well, I think you, I think I'm sure you must have. I I I I would probably would be surprised if I go back to episode 13, which was your first episode, and I wouldn't be surprised if you even mentioned it on air that oh yeah, I used to work here or whatever at the Disney store. Maybe I did. You I might have. I I haven't. I I actually I like to listen to that one. Mm -hmm. Um. 
I haven't listened to it in a while, though. <laughs> well, the thing about it that's crazy, it's like, we were we were complete strangers, in a sense. In a sense, we were. In a sense, we weren't. We knew who the other person, I guess, was. Yeah. We went to the same high school. So when you go to high school in a small town like we did, you kind of know mostly everybody, whether wherever yeah. they are in the social hierarchy, whatever it is in your position. But you know not, faces. You know faces like, for sure. You don't know people. Like, exactly, because we we we, we wouldn't talk. I don't think. I don't think we ever talked in school when we I went to school with each other. Oh, you know what? We talked. I think maybe like grad night. That's like maybe my only memory did we but like before <laughs> because before we left because i think i want to say it was netty maybe it wasn't her i don't know somebody had told me oh well yeah because i was hanging out with her on grad night um somebody told me to ask you about downloading the disneyland app <laughs> to check the times <laughs> that's right i remember that i remember and that and then Which... i was like I, I mean i knew who you were and i was yeah. like but I, I don't like i was scared i mean at in high school i did not talk to people like i i was yeah pff, unless i knew you already but like i was they told me to go ask you and i was like freaking out i was like what like i don't i don't what like Stranger i was danger. like freaking out <laughs> <laughs> You know, Literally. hold on. Let's let's put a button in that real quick because I want to I want to actually ask you this question. So, like, you are kind of like the most like vibrant and lively people I've met, and yet you really are an introvert, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you explain that? Like, you you don't seem or sound like a person who is like you. You sound like an outgoing person. Like, oh yeah, I'm down to go anywhere, you know, and everything. But I'm but, scared like, of them. <laughs> And, like, it's funny. I mean, I've gotten out of that a lot since high school because Mm. of all the different jobs that I've had. Because all of the jobs I've had are have been with customer customer service, except for one. But we don't talk about that one. Um, Oh. The last one. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, And so... Oh, that <laughs> that I just oh <laughs> you didn't get it. No, I I thought you meant the current one, but no, no, I know what you're talking no, no, about. No, that one. No, I talk to people all the time. Um, <laughs> what's it called? <laughs> God damn, um, that was that was. It feels like a long time ago that that happened, but it was <laughs> recently. Like, oh shit, it's been a long year. It has. Um, <laughs> what's it called? But yeah, like all of those jobs have helped me you know talk to people but like also don't get me wrong like it does take a lot for me to like go up to people and talk to them and like you know like I still get like nervous I'm still like I still have to like kind of stand back a little bit breathe and then go you know what I mean I understand like, what that feels <laughs> like though I mean I yeah I was that way with anyone I didn't know for most of my life it wasn't until recently that I was like okay I know how to I know how to compose myself I know how to act with people I don't know you kind of have to get over a little bit of a shyness when you're like you're in a position where you have to ask complete strangers questions so I kind of had to like you know move on from that kind of a fear but that doesn't mean that it goes away. I still have that little bit of a resistance when I'm, when um, when I'm meeting somebody else because I, I, I'm the kind of person that you know, wants to make a good impression. I, I, I yeah. I, I yeah. want I, I, I want people to feel comfortable around me. I want people to like me. You know, like yeah. I, I, I think that I'm yeah. A I, person I feel like enough, you know. I, I feel like I want people to feel comfortable around me. Yes, because I feel so uncomfortable all the time. <laughs> you know Perhaps what I mean? that's the like, case. I don't yes. want people to feel how I feel. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Um, I think that Kyle suffers through a lot of the same social anxiety too. Um, and that that may be a reason why the, the three of us kind of like latched on to each other. We have similar sets of uh, weaknesses, it seems, like, <laughs> when it comes to social anxiety and that kind of a situation. So you, 
Oh my god, I had forgotten about that. Of course, this was like 2012. No, 2013. No, 13, so, yeah. So it's it's been a while at this point, going on seven, fuck, seven years. Um, fuck, seven years. I have to say <laughs> that again. Like, what? Um, I just have to laugh at that because, like... And and to be honest, I don't even remember if I did actually go up to you. <laughs> I know someone. It rings a bell. Maybe someone think, asked for you. I don't know. Like I I I want to say what happened was like you guys were talking about it, and then somebody came up to me, and like they knew that I was like super pumped about the trip, and they were like, "Oh, you should get this." But, like, you should ask him which one it is, because I don't know which one it is. And then I started freaking out. But I don't remember if I actually went up to you, or if somebody went up to you and was like, hey, which one was it? And then they came back to me. Like, I don't remember what happened after that. It may have been one or the other. I don't remember, to be quite honest with you. There was a lot of other drama that was going on that day that I don't... That may have (laughs) overshadowed it with other people that was kind of ridiculous. Um... I don't mean you, by the way. I mean some other people that were just kind of like, oh, <laughs> shit. Well, this happened. Um, I just I find that hilarious because, like, who who tells Alexis Moreno to go to some other guy for help? Like, she should know everything but the back of her hand. <laughs> At that point, I hadn't been to the parks in a while. Like, really? Not, like, Kyle-level while, but it had been. I <laughs> that's, think- that's the standard Kyle-level while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I hadn't gone all through high school until grad night. Like, I think the last time I went was, like, right before So it had been a long time. School. It's been a long yeah. time then, like, around three or four years of that since then. At that point, the app was new, I mm-hmm. think. So that's why I, it was I like, believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that may have been our only... If that interaction of the entire, because like for me, um, what I loved about my senior year was that I kind of like pushed myself to be just more kind and warm to people and like, you know, just be like straightforward, down to earth, you know, open with them. I was really surprised. I know like, um, some of your friends um, or in some of your circle of friends have known me a lot longer than any of you have, I think. And I don't think there's any problem in naming them. I'm like Chewy and, and Dylan. I've known them since elementary school. Um, I would say we were close-ish there uh, as like second or third graders. We're going, we're going back way as back here. <laughs> um, but we weren't necessarily close friends um, anytime after that. I think you were closer with them. Um, and they were close with a uh, mutual associate of ours um, um, who we used to work with at, at the Barely News crew. I say work as if anybody got paid, <laughs> but nobody got paid for that shit. Um, if anything, we had to pay people to actually see us, um, which is sad and depressing, but okay. <laughs> but I remember a time, and I really, I, I, I was taken aback and I, and also appreciative of the compliment um, that involves, you know, Dylan and Chewie, because I, you know. I go out of my way to be, like, nice to people because I just think that's, like, decent and cordial. I really do believe in that stuff. It it may be because I do have a dark history in those elementary years where I was very off-putting and rude and mean and vicious to people. Um, Because I didn't like myself. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. I was very isolated from any kind of like friendships at all so i i took out that frustration and anger on them as if it was their fault that why they weren't friends with me not that chewy or dylan themselves were like the targets of those kind of outbursts but 
I genuinely look back at those moments as just like, you know, I wish I'd known better. I wish I'd, I'd just have been more like aware of, of situations like that and how I was like being. The point is, I'm sure that a lot of people who remember me from those years would be uh, if they would see me in public they wouldn't bother saying hi they probably wouldn't think very much of me now later years like in high school they would see how much i'd actually had changed as far as my demeanor and as far as my composure and how i would treat people mm -hmm. point is dylan and chewy were around when i wouldn't be very nice about it, and i had a lot of issues but one time when we were doing a Barely News Crew project, I believe it was at Giselle's house, and um, Chewie and Dylan were there. Um, I think we were filming some kind of a video related with, I guess it was a music video that didn't go anywhere uh, involving them, but they were there while we were doing a recording of some sort. And uh, like I said, it took me aback because I guess I just had a natural a natural inclination that they just remembered me who I was and just would put me at a distance. But mm -hmm. I remember that Tony, who invited them, he said to me that um, they were really surprised at how and this is their words because i wouldn't necessarily describe myself as being quote unquote cool <laughs> um but they were actually that's what tony said that they were actually surprised about how cool i was about everything about just in, my demeanor in general and i really do take that as a compliment because i that's kind of my goal right that's kind of like how i want to be perceived it's just this nice person because yeah. I wasn't that for such a long time, and it, it that that comment did take me aback. And yeah, I, I think I, there would be a couple of times where Chewy would be at some party, whether it be connected with you or there was a a house party a few years back. And you know, Chewy and I were friends of some sort um, back in the second or third grade, um, and. Yeah, I, I really wonder what he's up to. Uh, don't often talk with him, but anytime we do, we do catch up. Um, but that's basically my thing is that with senior year, I would go out of my way to be like upfront with people, down to earth, like not make too much of a fuss about anything. And, and, and a lot of those times, I'd just be nervous about talking with people. I mean, I was aware yeah. of like, you know, known names and people who were popular for this or for that. Not that I was like starstruck because like, believe me, I didn't really care. But it, it, it makes you aware of like, well, I don't want to like look like a, an embarrassment in front of like, you know, any crowds of people. And that year, like I was involved with yearbook class and a newspaper class and so a lot of the stuff would conflate where i would have to like go to all the public uh all of the like official things that were going on like football mm -hmm. games whether it be like i was either covering the game itself for the paper or i was covering the band for the yearbook uh the golf teams um and so on and so forth so um it exposed me to you know putting myself out there and being comfortable with having to do that it was kind of like a training for what would come what i would do years later but um yeah but yeah for whatever reason we never really came across each, each other's way no but i like how you said that i because that's happened to me before too like getting a compliment by somebody that just like has nothing to do with you mm -hmm. you know and it feels good yes or, i mean i don't even know if it was like a comp at least in like my situation mm. but man like so what happened with me um it was also senior year and it was like during the time when and everybody was like getting accepted to schools and all that stuff Ooh, yeah and i i think at this point 
So I applied to go to design school. Mm -hmm. Um, And at this point, I'm not sure if I had already gotten in or if I was thinking about about it. Um, But I think it was after I had gotten in. But at that point... I wasn't sure if I was actually going to go because, of, you know, money situation and, like, all that stuff. Um, but I, it was, it was during drama class. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And so I got a message from this girl who had, um, I had talked to her maybe a few times before, um, like I said, I knew her face, and I yeah, I had like a cl- a few classes with her before, but she was older than us. She was a year older than us, so she had already you know left the school and everything. But she sent me a text because she was friends with my boyfriend at the time, and uh, I he like brought it up to her, um, about like me getting into that school and. Um, uh, you know, that I wasn't really sure if I, like, was gonna go, whatever. And so she sends me this text and is like, hey, so, you know, she's, like, telling me the whole story. And she's like, I think you should go. I think that you, um, like, have a lot of potential. You, um, like, you deserve this type of thing. Mm-hmm. Again, this is like a person like I had only talked to her like a handful of times. Wow. Yeah, and man, I was like in the verge of like crying in the middle of class. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. Like I'll, I'll never like forget that because it it was really good. <laughs> because it meant a lot to you, and you know sometimes yeah. like this is why I I always say that um you can never tell a person enough times um how good they are and because sometimes i feel like a lot of us don't often give ourselves the credit for what we've done and for what we and for the ability that we know that we can do um i mean i've i suffer from self-esteem issues i always have um but uh that didn't necessarily mean that I was uh, unable to tell when people needed to hear certain things. I know that um, mm-hmm. on my last day or my last two days of high school, there were a lot of uh, friends of mine who I wouldn't necessarily see again, who I wanted to say. I went out of my way to visit as many people as possible and to kind of just say thank you and goodbye. Oh, and by the way, you are so good. You can do whatever you want. Don't let people tell you that you can't. And I just think it's important for us to remind each other that we are only limited by our own vision. By our... That's just kind of what it is. And I myself need to be told that same thing. I One of Mm -hmm. my favorite memories... From I, I, it was literally the last moments of senior year, when the bell was about to ring from that last day, and um, I had literally planned out where I wanted to be, where when that last bell rang. I don't know where you were. Well, I didn't care you where you were. You were nothing to me at that point. I mean, let's be real. I didn't know you, <laughs> uh, but uh, that's that's kind of where we are. But um. I wanted to be in the drama room uh, that because that classroom was just like, I feel like I was the happiest when I was there, literally mm-hmm. all the time for all of the people that were there, obviously. Um, and I remember that uh, just the thing I want, yeah, I want to say three minutes before I was there kind of alone. Nobody was in the classroom. It was just dead empty. Mm-hmm. And it, it was like one of those situations where you're like looking back on like a house before you when all the furniture is moved out and you're just you're saying goodbye to it like yeah. sentimentally for the last time. It was kind of like one of those situations. But I remember um, our good friend um, and mentor of the drama department 
he came up to me and he said, um, you have the ability to do whatever you want, so long as you set your mind to it. Remember that. And it was such a powerful thing just to say to anyone, but also to hear that. And that's kind of like, I wonder if perhaps he picked up on a little bit of like what was going through my mind because, um, and I'm not even sure if it's that hard to tell sometimes like how I'm feeling. I, 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 <laughs> I tried to like conceal a little bit of like what my feelings are, but I'm the kind of person where like, I wear my heart on my sleeve. You can, you can see exactly how I'm feeling just by the look on my face. And I, as I've mentioned already several times, I'm the kind of person that dreads the ending of anything, especially the ending of it, of that kind of an experience where I won't have, I won't be around these people. And he may have mm -hmm. picked up on that. And he, he must've thought to himself that, man, I need to, I need to say something to him because he just, he, he, he's going through a lot right now, at least mentally anyway. And so I thank him for that. And yeah, those words really stick to me to this day because they kind of keep me going. And that's something yeah. you'll ever forget. And of course, the bell rings and then everyone's all celebrating and shit happens. But yeah, you see, we go through a lot of different things like that. And we hadn't even mentioned. We haven't even. <laughs> we didn't know each other, which is so crazy because I feel like I, I came across a lot of people that year. And yet we never really. I didn't come up to you about the yearbook because I would talk to a lot of people about like, you know, ordering their yearbook or something like that. I didn't. Did you even buy a yearbook that year? Yeah, I bought my yearbook. I don't know. I don't remember. Which I will say, <laughs> it was one of the uh, one of the best received yearbooks of all time at BUHS history. So <laughs> nobody ever did a better yearbook than me. Um, I do the best yearbooks. Um, <laughs> that's kind of a, a closed deal. And, you know, I don't want to brag or anything, but it was like Nettie and I and Giselle really went out of our way to... Because we the dedic the the yearbook is dedicated to somebody every year, and like, if anyone needs any bit of dedication, it's this particular person who I just mentioned. Yeah. So, I uh, I was so happy that we were able to have a little bit a little bit of pull there uh, with giving this person. I feel the recognition that still to this day he's not given because this man is such. Um, a force of nature watching him move with what you know all the duties that he's asked to do is amazing and um yeah i i'm really happy to see that he's doing well personally um but yeah you know and that was an interesting time what you just mentioned about like oh you know people getting all of these you know letters of acceptance and like Oh, look at the school that I got in and look at how how I got it made and everything going after that. Um I guess now it all just seems kind of trivial because as we know, um a lot of things unfortunately don't turn out as, you know, quite as you <laughs> hoped. Um but at the time it's all really exciting. Um or not. Or not. Or not. <laughs> I know I had my own my own situation with that where like I guess I I was angling to leave but not really because I didn't want to go so it was it was a weird time um, yeah. when that happened. So um, this brings us back to um, that podcast when we first yeah. uh, had a podcast together, and I'll let you talk about that. But what I wanted to say. Yeah. Well, no, I'll let you talk about it because you guys are the ones that came up to me and then I'll say my story. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, it's because like, the main thing is with episode 13, um, the first podcast that you were involved with, um, what is so remarkable about that recording is you wouldn't know it by listening to it that that was by all intents and purposes, the very first 
conversation of any kind that the three of us have ever had. Yeah. Like well, literally okay. and straight Wait, up. I, I didn't. I didn't. You and Kyle had already known each other, obviously. Yeah. I did actually know Kyle. Right. For multiple reasons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to get into what those multiple reasons were? <laughs> so we talked about one during the impressions video. That's right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> to me, Kyle was known as the Jack Sparrow guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Because I want to say it was multiple years that he dressed up as Jack Sparrow. But the one that always comes to mind is in, I believe, sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And he was like full on Jack Sparrow. It was an amazing costume. Amazing costume. So, yeah, that was, like, my first memory of Kyle. And then, freshman year, I took a drama class, and he was in that drama class, and we actually did a skit together. Oh. Um, but, yeah. But I don't know if we, I mean, we did talk and stuff. Obviously, like, we had to talk. Um, but then, like, after that, that that was it. <laughs> And then I knew that you guys were friends. Like, I think I knew you because of Kyle, because I knew who Kyle was. So, and then I saw you guys together. Right. Um, but yeah. So continue. Sorry. Well, you know, not to like drag on, you know, like linger on that uh, thought, but it, it kind of be- begins like to get a little bit suspicious as to how we missed each other. Um, even Kyle on like in the later years, because like there were a lot of mutual friends we had, like, especially yeah. in, in, in senior year, um, like we, Kyle and I got really close with both Nettie and Tony mm-hmm. and like, they are like connected to like, at least your group. So it's like, it's, it's interesting how like we never really at the very least we're like aware of like each like you yeah. were like you were aware that I was like Kyle's friend but I don't know if you were even aware that I was like Tony's friend or Nettie's friend no so like interesting yeah and then you guys went to my house one time and I didn't even know we didn't know you <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I like wasn't that... even there <laughs> That's, that was the sad, that was the fun thing about it is that, uh, and by the way, we were there because we were invited by a mutual friend of ours. Um, and so evidently, uh, I mean, I guess it was okay or whatever, but like, yeah, it was, it, it, it did, it, it did, uh, make me wonder, wow, I'm going to like this person's house and I don't even know who she is. Um, but. <laughs> and then you get there and you're like, where is she? <laughs> I know. Like, you think that the person would be there. <laughs> At the house, but they're not. <laughs> that's that's crazy. <laughs> so all of this happened before you even like we even even know each other, basically. Yeah. That is that's insane. Um, although hilarious too. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, look, the, the details get foggy or year in year. I don't remember exactly like what happened. I know that Kyle was looking at seriously putting the podcast on pause and honestly like seriously just considering canceling it all together and now here we are 256 episodes later no i'm kidding (laughs) um but uh yeah like it was it was a turbulent year for a lot of reasons um Barely News Crew was picking up a little bit. Actually, at that point, it was picking up a lot. But Kyle and I had a lot of very personal disputes, um, arguments with each other from a creative standpoint. Um, And we had a falling out. But then uh, by that point, we had semi-reconciled anyway. To the point where we were on talking terms and we were fine and I was helping him out with Red Spotlight. Um, 
and um, trying to help him like not cancel this because I I saw how happy this show made him and I didn't want that to go away. I also didn't want the podcast in general to go away because I thought it was a very fascinating at that point. I mean, I don't think podcasts were as big as they are now. Like everyone just listened to podcasts, but it was just genuinely fun to do it. I felt like I was very happy with the videos that I would do for like the barely news crew and the movie stuff. But like, I always had so much more fun with the podcasts as, as I, you know, as we're doing right now, because we're, we get to have the space for these wonderful and insightful conversations. Um, but yeah, he, he, um, they, he was just struggling and we were all struggling with trying to give the show a feel any kind of an identity, any kind of flow. Like there was just no momentum going on. There were a lot of people who were involved at the beginning. They all left because of um, uh, different situations. And um, yeah, Kyle just wasn't feeling it. Mm -hmm. Like there wasn't a person he could bounce off of um, beside me, but his main thing was like, I don't want it to just be the Barely News crew, but in the radio, in the radio form, because I would be there. I would always be there for him. But we needed somebody else to add a different element to it. And uh, then then came you. I don't remember how it was that your name came up in conversation. I know that we were looking at very we were considering several different people to come on as uh as a co-panelist of sorts. I am trying to recall the other names we considered, but yours was interesting because you were known as a Disney fan. And that literally was all that was like, that's all that was, that we latched onto was like, interesting. This person could be of use. I, I wish I could remember more of the details we were discussing, but we needed a lifeline. We kind of were desperate. <laughs> um, I mean, literally. So I, I think um, what I what I said to Kyle was, look, um, I will reach out in your name, and I will get a feel, and see if she's even interested. Which, if we're being honest. It was kind of a long shot because we're just reaching out to this almost complete stranger. We knew all of you because of your house <laughs> and, of course, the connections with like Tony and with Nettie. So we we were aware of you. But again, uh, you don't really know a person until you have any kind of a contact with them. So mm -hmm. it was a long shot to see if you were interested. And I think this is where you come in. Yeah. <laughs> and like this is where you fill in the gap in the story of like when you first got that text and what was going on in your life. Well, there was also going a lot going on with me. Um, which is why I think I also kind of latched on to you guys. Cause at this point, like all my friends are gone. Um, like you know, they all move away and stuff. And literally going, all of them. Yeah. And like, I was going through a breakup Damn. And so, uh, when I got your message, I was actually working in San Diego, um, really? at the fair. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think I had just left. It was, it, I know it was at night and I see like your picture and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? Who is this? Mm. Uh, I was very confused, but I knew about, uh, the videos that you guys would do, mm. but I didn't think, like, that that was what the conversation was going to be about. Right. And so, yeah, I'm, like, reading it, and you did mention that, you know, it's because of Disney and all that stuff, and my cousin was next to me, and I'm like... What the heck? This guy from like high school asked me to be in the in his podcast, 
and she's like what <laughs> like i don't even know i don't even know if she knew what a podcast was at that point right this yeah. is, we're talking about like a century ago <laughs> at this point man um <clears throat> and i'm just like what the heck and also interesting because i wasn't like into like youtube or like anything like that um until after high school so like literally my peak of like youtube obsession was when you guys texted me (laughs) so that was kind of also cool because i'm like oh because like i found it interesting obviously and so i was like i wonder like you know it would go through my head like what would i do and like obviously i would do something with disney and so it was it was cool and I don't know what was said. Like, I don't know what I texted back and stuff. But I think it took us a while to get together. Did it? I don't remember that part. Like, I think it took us, like, a few weeks. Because I was still working. Because if I was working, then it was probably in June. And then I don't think we recorded until maybe the end of July. That is interesting. Yeah. So it, it took us a while. Um, yes, because then I had just gone to D23, because we talked about it, and that year, I believe it was in, like, early July. Yeah, it it seemed to be around that time. Did you make a decision immediately about to do this or you were like were you you were sitting on it a few days about whether or not you wanted to go to like a complete stranger's house and like do all this stuff? No, I think I text I think it may maybe I like texted you like when I got home or mm. something. Uh but no, I I think I like I was very interested in stuff. Um I also just felt like weird cuz I had never like, I had only one person to talk about, like, Disney stuff with, you know? Like, it was my cousin. So it was... I felt weird being like, oh, I'm just gonna go with these people, talk about Disney, what do they have to say, you know? I'm also, like, very defensive about it, so <laughs> it's just kind of like, like, what do I say? Like, should I, like, completely nerd out, or, like, should I just, like... <laughs> Hold back. <laughs> oh, that's right. I mean, that that is an ongoing thing for you, right? Because um, you, you had a lot of friends, but surprisingly enough, you didn't have many at all to kind of vent about all of these different, like, <laughs> fandoms that you were really into. I mean, they, they're all, they all have, like, different things, but, like, Disney is kind of just me. Right. So it was just you and Susan? What? You only had one person that you would that you would be able to like geek out with Disney. Oh, um I mean I tell her stuff. I feel like they're more into it now because they've gone a lot more to Disneyland and then Sergio loves going to Disneyland. <laughs> And so I feel like now I could kind of talk about it with at least more with them. And they like, they'll understand what I'm saying sometimes. Uh Uh-huh. But, but yeah, no, but like, it was cool. And then, you know, it like happened and I don't know. It was like, it felt very like natural just to like talk to you guys. And then the fact that, like, you guys knew what I was talking about, I had never, like, had that experience with anybody, at that point, at least. Mm-hmm. So that was really, that was cool. Yeah, that was kind of the strangest thing, right? Like, basically, from your perspective, like, you were at a point where, like, all your friends had moved on, you had no one, and, like, out of the blue... We come into the picture. <laughs> yeah. And there was like no indication at all to think like, oh, okay, well, this is something. Um, And um, 
being a person as you are, you know, with like trying to be conscientious of like how much you want to like, you know, geek out as Kyle would say about a particular thing. You had nothing to worry about. You know that now (laughs) you really know that now, but like, yeah, it was exciting that day. Cause it was like someone new is here and it was exciting to have like someone, someone else like have a different perspective and also one that we felt like didn't have any kind of baggage. Like I felt like a lot of the people who were around us for the first year or so, whether it would be with red spotlight or with BNC kind of like <sighs> gave up on us behind our backs and just like ignored us. I mean, mm-hmm. not to like throw shade out there, but that's just a reality. Um, so and then you come, and before we even start recording, do you, like, remember, like, what was going through your mind, like, before we even start recording, like, how, like, hey, say hi, I'm Alexis, too, I have the same name that you, <laughs> like, yeah. I guess it was our first, like, <laughs> it was our first, like, official, like, meeting of any kind, like, how was that like? What do you even remember? I, it's been a long time. Yeah, and then also, like... Well, like I, I, like how I said before, I don't talk to a lot of people. At least at that point, I didn't really talk to a lot of people. Um, I, I'm a really shy person, and like I think even like the people around me, were like, like couldn't believe that I was doing this. Really? <laughs> well, yeah, because they're like, you're. I don't because they know how awkward I can be. So it's like, I don't know, like I felt them, you know, they didn't, like obviously they weren't mean about it, but I knew that they were thinking like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> This is so unlike you. Yeah. Well, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, like, I feel like it's so interesting the reaction you got for doing this for even thinking of doing this and then also the only reservations that you had because the beauty of that recording as i've said before and i'll say again like you would have thought we were friends for years if you go back and listen to that recording it flowed so naturally i was shocked how good this was going i think even five minutes in (laughs) honestly because we just had a natural um way about it it came it came so easily how we would talk about this yes it was disney themed which was in part to get you excited <laughs> about what we were talking about. Cause that was kind of the, the linchpin was like, all right, how do we get her excited or interested? Let's do a Disney podcast, which in, of course in and of itself would be also the unofficial first episode of what would be the fantasy fair podcast, which you and Kyle have done so well over the years. Um, yeah. Uh, it was kind of, it was, I mean, not, 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 not to like, drag this out into one of Kyle's puns, but it literally felt like it was a magical time. Yeah. No, it it did though. <laughs> yeah. And like we knew we knew that I mean at least I felt so comfortable talking with you and 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 the energy and the excitement of the podcast that like Phew we're not cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like it was such a relief it was such a relief because i knew that i knew instantaneously he would want you he would want to have you back and that you would want to come back so yeah. it was so exciting it was so exciting and that and of course here we are um five years fucking later five years later and um <sighs> wow it's crazy it, it it, it's it's so crazy like how much we've gone through in our lives since then. It feels like we've traveled the, a million miles. Dude, it really has though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like the the beauty of the podcasts is that they're kind of like um, time capsules of like where we were in our lives. Um, if you go back to those recordings, 
um mm-hmm. like where i mean like literally where we were because you know the, the beauty of the podcast is that it, it it allowed us to stay in touch and close with each other practically on a daily basis um if not a weekly basis even when we were like entirely separated because you <laughs> moved away and then i moved away and then we each moved in other directions away <laughs> So um, again together I, I know right separate. like yeah there was an ongoing <laughs> thing that Alexis and I have where we seem to be moving not together but we seem to be just in general moving to different locations at the same yeah. period of time <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> I know I know <laughs> it, I mean it, it also I mean not not to like you know make it too, a, too big of a deal out of like your gender or whatever but like it was I felt very important to have a female voice on the show because all of the others were indisposed, if not um, entirely unavailable to be a part of it. I mean, we've had, uh, I know that, I mean, if people were listening to it, to it like around these days, maybe like, you know, it may be like a male centric, like, and it is, for the most part, a male dominated like podcast. But you know, we when we started this thing, we had a bunch of, you know, wonderful people who were around us and working. Um, but, you know, for one reason or the other, it just would never work out to the point where we would have like weekly podcasts or shows like that. There would be so many so many schedules to um try and um work around. But I think you just add in not just because like you're a girl, but literally your personality, you add in a very interesting voice. Um, like you are just so from the very beginning, you were so honest about the things that you like and don't like to a point (laughs) where it's become a running joke. Like you inevitably piss one of us off with how honest you are with like some things that like you, I know one of the, like, give you several examples you don't like indiana jones which destroys kyle you don't like <laughs> up. you don't like the movie up and Ky- and peter wants to kill you for that you don't like chloe bennett at all and i don't understand that but that's okay like it, it's just a lot of these different things that you that make you you i know um there's an ongoing uh gag on the show that um uh you're this demon that's been sent to kill or not kill, but to ruin Peter's life. <laughs> I think the other day he texted, he really hates you for some reason. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, what did I say? The drive-in theater. Uh, oh yeah. The drive-in theater. That was funny. <laughs> that you sent over that there was one near you and he really hated you for that. Um, But you that's know, what that's what David would tell me uh, when he, David, my brother, uh, when he started listening to them, that he he like he genuinely liked listening to us because he liked all the different like voices and perspectives that we each have. Mm-hmm. So and he's like, you know, he he would tell me like Alexis and Kyle would usually be on the same side. Peter would be the one to like attack, and then you would be in the middle, just like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of became a running thing, you know. I really, I one of the positives, if there are any positives, and no, we just talked a lot about a lot of shit about like how you know horrible this year was and all the bad stuff that's happened to you. But if there are any such positives to kind of like cling to in this like age of Corona. Is the fact that you have, you are back, like, on a full-time basis on this show, which you hadn't been able to do for, yeah. like, a long time. And it reminds me so much, especially the shows where, like, the four of us are together. It reminds me so much of that energy that we we hadn't had since um, those early podcasts. It was, like, around late 2015, early 2016 um force awakens deadpool zootopia era for being like for those that know your movie um release dates and uh, batman v superman civil war that's when those movies came out and when we would come here in my room and 
all four of us, and we just have conversation about um, all these movies. And it would mm-hmm. be... And I, I'm happy that David liked... Of course, David, who started as a listener and then like won his way, I guess, into being a member of the team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a long-winded story. Ask somebody else. Um <laughs> But I'm happy that that's that's the reason why he latched on to the series because it is, and I I try to do my best in in giving every everyone a different perspective and a different voice to it. And like, there are times where we all like agree on certain things, but there are most times where we have very different takes and we have a different reaction to it. And of course, part of the comical nature of it would be when we would get so furious about these stupid things that we would kill each other over it literally on the air and that is part of the entertainment (laughs) but what, what i've also found interesting is like how much each of us have grown since then to the point where like our own voices have changed as the years have gone by in terms of like um what our viewpoints are um but man, man, it, it it gets it gets loud sometimes. <laughs> it got loud sometimes when we would um we would do that. But it's it's one of those things that you you you, you literally you you um you come into by accident. Like the dynamic that, that each of us has is like it's great and it's I don't think anybody would have ever called it. Yeah. Like I was, I was actually scared. <laughs> I think Kyle may have been more scared when, um, when I talked with him about like um, introducing Peter into being on the podcast as well. Cause he was mainly doing BNC with me. And um, I would have, I would have been scared. <laughs> <laughs> Were you? I would have been scared. I mean, I didn't know. Because one day he just like ran, like the first time I saw him was that day, I think we were at Giselle's house and he was there. I think that had, like, I had known about him because, um, I forgot why, but I saw him there and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this person? <laughs> and then he just like started showing up like during the recordings and I'm like, all right. <laughs> You weren't it warned? Was, it was no, because this was like right after, and uh-huh. then um, well, because at this point, like I I I had only done a few, so I didn't really know who else was like in it. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't know if it was just like you two, or if like there was other people, and so he just started showing up, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's like yeah, a lot of people who would be around us would, would have a hard time in discerning between who exactly was involved in what project. So like at that time with red spotlight, it was just you and Kyle and, and, and me. And then other people would be for the, like Julio and, and Peter and Giselle would be mainly working on barely news crew stuff. So it, I mean, for us, it was easy to tell who was on who, but we should have, I mean, there were a lot of things we should have done differently. Let's be honest about that. Hey, you live and you learn. But one of the things that we, both of us should have done a better job was like distinguishing like who, um, who was involved in what. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I mean, you're a person and it doesn't matter. Like just because you're working on this or that didn't mean you weren't like welcome at this year or that there. Um, that's interesting. We should have said something to you. Considering the the person we were about to unleash on you <laughs> with Peter Martinez, I don't know what you were expecting, but that's not like I, I was just genuinely afraid that that would destroy the show literally because like you two were you two are the polar opposites of one another. It's like it's like Christ and the Antichrist, and like when that shit happens, like you don't you don't know what's gonna happen. So like I think Kyle and I were both on the edge of our seats. Um, when like we, the first show that the four of us, and again, like you two didn't know I, each other. I don't other. remember what the first show was. I don't, at the top, at the top of my head, I can't I, remember I, what it I was. I want to say it was the one at your house we did in 
that table by your kitchen, like not in your room. But then I, I don't think so because I think at that point we might have already done. A I few. think at that point we had done at least one or two. I remember that episode as well. Um, the Kyle called it "What's Happening Disney." We're talking about a whole bunch of things are being canceled because of Shanghai and everything. That um, one makes me laugh because all I remember is Peter talking about Disney Infinity being canceled. <laughs> <laughs> How upset he was. It was so funny. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. That is so funny. It's still funny after all these it's five years later, it's so still funny. funny. dude. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So like, yeah, I was legitimately frightened that not only would you two not get along, that it would just ruin everything, but I don't know, I guess you genuinely liked the one, each other, and, like, we all just kind of grew closer because of it. I miss those days. <laughs> I, I don't know those. if that was the case. I think we just kind of went along with it. <laughs> well, that's true. You went along with it, and then it ended up being, I would assume, more pleasant than not. <laughs> yes. Um, As the experiences went on. But, I mean, it was... uh, Yeah, it, it's interesting because, like, I... What I do credit Peter for is, like, giving us the freedom to, like, not be so, like, beating around the bush and, like, um, safe with um, some of our takes. Like, I feel like he kind of set the example for, like, going straight for the jugular <laughs> and ripping out somebody's throat and if we didn't like something or that there. So, um yeah, I remember one of, this is hilarious to me, one of the first episodes that we did um, as a four, uh, the four of us was, um, this is a cursed, um, like, segment. I don't know why Kyle thought it would be a good idea to bring it back, but the remake remedies. Um, and if you go back and listen to that episode, there will be some stuff on there that hasn't aged well. Um, even the stuff that was like, that's not necessarily inappropriate, but it, it, um, is hilarious though. Um, but, um, it was just hilarious watching Peter single-handedly like derail the entire show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he just destroyed Kyle's like premise for like remakes. Like he announced, the first thing he said was like, I, I hate live action remakes. And I decided to use my list as a way to basically make fun of you for even thinking that this was a good idea. <laughs> and uh and the rest is history, I think. Um when it came to that um that regard anyway. But uh it it seems it wasn't a moment too soon that we came along and um that's when we started to become friends. At a time when everybody else had just left you behind. Literally. Yeah. Very, very interesting timing. <clears throat> um, and like, it's amazing to me how we've, we've been able to kind of like, I mean, our dynamic has more or less stayed the same. Our relation to each other has more or less stayed the same. I, I mean, I, I think that as the years go on, the more and more we know each other, and you know we've gone grown closer with each other um but yeah yeah that's uh 5 years since that has happened um and getting back to where we are this year i would be remiss if we didn't go over um you know to kind of like um reach back around to the sad thing that happened to you at the beginning of this episode um, and kind of what has plagued every last person on this show was we've gotten, we got bitten by the online shopping bug <laughs> and like you use that um, as a way to kind of make yourself feel better for all of the stuff that happened. But if we're being honest, every single last one of us went fucking crazy Um when it came to um, buying new stuff. So as a result, 
as a result, I have decided to introduce a new segment on the weekly shows, and that is uh, in similar to um, what we saw this week, which, you know, delved into the movies and TV shows that we would see on a weekly basis. I'm now adding in what we bought this week because that's how bad it, <laughs> it's legitimately gotten at this point. Um, so let's go ahead and ring in the new segment um, because Alexa so happens to be um, broadcasting from something new that she purchased. <laughs> well, actually. Actually. <laughs> I bought more stuff. Okay. Well, I mean, the more the merrier. I've got plenty of stuff myself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll talk about this the first. So I signed up for school. Uh, which, which costs pretty, money. Yes, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, but I... So last semester, I don't know why, but I uh, started doing my homework in my garage because um, I would like... Uh, I would open the door and, like, you know, I would do my homework outside. But I would be, like, inside of my garage. Wouldn't it be hot? Uh, It wasn't hot at this point. Okay. It was, like, nice weather. uh, Which is pretty fun. I liked it. But it is hot now. So I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> And I like being in my room. So I got a little table to put my computer and to do my homework in on my bed. Which I am pretty happy with at this point. Which, if uh, of course our listeners wouldn't be aware, because you know they, this is not a video visual uh, show, I think that that's kind of a godsend for you, because at, at least for your back, because yeah. it, didn't, it didn't look very comfortable the way that you were doing. Because <laughs> every time we would do podcasts, especially if you were recording from your room, you'd be on your bed, but you would always lean forward, and yeah. I'm like. I couldn't even do that for 15 minutes, much less like two and a half <laughs> hours. Like that just looked painful. So thank God that, you know, your back at least is covered this time. Cause it, I mean, I don't, I'm surprised it didn't break after how many times like, <laughs> like man, it must... I know I tried, I like moved around everywhere in my room, but it just like was not working. And you don't so... have a desk and a table there or, or a chair there. So that's why. Yeah. So I got this. So it's, which is it's... the next best thing. Now you have a desk yeah. at your bed. Yeah, I don't even know like how it like how I thought about it. I was like, huh. Well, didn't uh, David mention it? No. 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 I oh. was just, like, I want to do like my homework in my room. Like, I don't want to go to the kitchen or anything. And so I was like, what if they have like tables for your bed? <laughs> <laughs> I remember you shared the the Amazon link on it, and I um. Oh boy, this is how bad it got, and I'm like, within seconds, I was like, "Do I want this?" Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> and then I kept looking at the pictures, and I I was thinking about it real, real hard for I want to say, oh my god, maybe 15 or so minutes before I was like, <laughs> maybe I don't need this right now. Um, but I thought about it. <laughs> it was some serious consideration because I think for the price and for what it is you're getting, I I thought it was very, very reasonable. And I liked how it looked. And how is it working out for you? I think it look, it's it's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm very excited to decorate it. <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> but yeah, now you have a wonderful desk table that you have your laptop on. And of course, you have your microphone now on. So yeah. sky is the limit now. And then... I bought more Disney stuff. No. <laughs> I'm uh, sure everyone well, listening is things, shocked. Actually. Okay. So okay. I bought a, um, it's the Onward jacket. The one that. Oh, his father's jacket, Letterman uh -huh. jacket. Yeah. Oh my God. Really? I bought that. By the way, that and movie then, exists, people. Go watch it. <laughs> please. Um, yeah, I well, I had seen it, but like it it went on sale and so I bought it. <laughs> of course. Um and then um I bought a useless thing that I am not even going to use, but it's meant to be used. So it is a uh place to put your sticky notes in. 
but it uh-huh. is uh the oh dang what is it called i forgot the name of it but um the cave from peter pan <laughs> The, let, the, me, let me let me let me skull show you. rock skull rock <laughs> oh it's basically like a it's literally what well, i'm i i'm 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 all, uh, okay so alexis just showed me exactly what it is she purchased it is basically some shit that you can hold your sticky notes on, um, like a paperweight of some sort, and it is shaped and themed to Skull Rock from Peter Pan. Yes. That's cool. Um, it, yeah, it's literally just for decoration because it came with sticky notes. Um, but am I going to write on them? No, because it has a picture of Peter Pan and Captain Hook on it. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, for, it's for decoration, basically, not for use. <laughs> It's for display yes. only. Display only. <laughs> God and damn. then, these I can actually use. Um, and then I bought some books. I bought three books. I bought the two Kiyoshi books from The Last Airbender. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot the names of it, actually. But one's a green one, one's a red one. They're supposed to be really good. We'll find out. Um, and then I I don't know if like you're into this, but <laughs> um, I was a really big, uh, like, what are they called? Twilight head? Twilight? Whatever. Oh, like, I, I, I'm school. not at all. I never, but I mean, not, not that I would like pass judgment. I never actually <laughs> saw a movie or read the book. But I mean, a, a, a Twilight head? Is that yeah, what they're called? I think so. I don't know. The Twilight okay, Maybe series. it wasn't that big, but I was into it. Um, and so they recently came out with the news that they are coming out with another book. And so I decided to start reading my books again. But uh, the last book in the series, I actually let my uncle's ex-girlfriend borrow it. And I never got it back. <laughs> And so uh, I bought that one too. <laughs> yeah, never let people borrow your shit. They're never going <laughs> to return it, especially stuff like that. But yeah, that, that's kind of, at least from the last time that we talked, that's kind of all that I've bought, I believe. Well, that doesn't we'll include the out. stuff that wasn't even in on air, which was a whole bunch of stuff like plates. Oh, yeah, and... but that was like last month. <laughs> <laughs> We're in oh. this month now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll see if I buy some more stuff next week. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> we will, though. Come on. I mean, we made it a segment at this point. Um, What did I get this week? Okay, so I, I purchased another poster. Um, an 11 by 17, so this is like um, a smaller size, um, from Etsy. So that's my first poster from Etsy, just to see like, all right, well, I like this poster. It is a Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse poster. Uh, not the one you have. It's a different like um, design. I liked it because of the color scheme. It, it was overwhelmingly purple and red um, and it had all the little like Spider-Men with Miles Morales in the middle. Um, I know. It was really cool. Um it was like, what, 10, 15 bucks. Um, I saw that the manufacturer, the seller uh, was going to ship it out of LA. So I was like, all right, well, this won't take overly long, I think. Um, and it was a little bit, I was a little resistant to it because Peter had talked about his issues with using mm-hmm. Etsy. And from what I understood, because I look, I looked into where exactly he bought that particular item from. That, uh, especially, I read, I read the um, the reviews for that seller, and he has. Uh, it's happened on occasion that he has not shipped the items at all, and or they never come. So, and he's also from London, and he ships out of London, so. I told him to, to um, check up on that. I don't know if he did. I think he, he kind of resigned 
to like fuck Etsy at this point. And then like COVID is happening, so I don't even know if that's or he, he could be dead too. I don't know. Um, the thing is, uh, 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 I don't know if that's what you were getting at. Or no, unless, I meant no? like with shipping and stuff. Like, are they allowed to send us stuff? Oh yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. I mean, uh, the 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 mail has been backlogged uh, for a while. That's only getting slower. So that is to be expected. I mean, to be fair, you could have dropped dead too. You never know. I mean, people are doing that every day. Um, Two thousand people died today. Hey, um, I know. I heard. Yeah. <laughs> fuck uh, 160,000 dead that's um where we are right now with that but yeah uh so we'll see when that comes i i still am waiting i i, I would assume it'll be in the next few days because it did say august 10th i ordered this way back in june because they took like a month and a half just to get here from china this is from from hong kong this manufacturer i get these i mentioned this before i get some of these uh, unique designs from this manufacturer who um, prints these posters on silk material. Okay. Um, so the one that I got recently was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That came in like about half a month ago. And the one that I'm waiting for is Avengers Endgame. I already have an Endgame poster. That was one that was free from Disney when Disney Movie Club was a thing. But of course, mm-hmm. they got rid of that shit and now there's no free shit at all. So... Um, there was another design of a poster that I wanted to get for Avengers Endgame, and so I found a seller that had that one, and so that um, I'm waiting for that as well to come in. But as far as like what I did purchase this week, um, were more LED lights for my room. So yeah, so if you see behind me, primarily on the television, that um. That's the new set. It was a little bit brighter because the old set had a little bit of a glitch to it where like um, I can only like set it on one color because any other color would like it would glitch and then it would like do like a a color wheel thing. And that's not what I wanted. So um, I wanted like it to be as bright as it is right now behind me. So that's kind of where it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other lights, the old LEDs, if you can see on my screen next to me, I moved them over there to where my movie case is at and they have a, have a wonderful mm. backdrop to it, um, over there. Oh, so. I see them. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I've acquired, um, this week. Um, I did go, um, to Starbucks and I bought a new drink, uh, that I hadn't previously had. I am very familiar, of course, having worked there with the refreshers. Uh, very um, much a fan of the strawberry acai, as well as uh, passion tea. But what really was delicious, like absolutely delicious, was uh, and this is also a very popular drink: the very berry hibiscus um, with lemonade and passion. Oh my fucking god, it's so good! <laughs> it is so so good. Because I, I last podcast I talked about how I went and I tried the cold brew for the first time, the regular cold brew, not the vanilla sweet cream cold brew. Um, uh-huh. But the cold Have brew you tried was the ba- dragon fruit one. No, 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 no. Have you- oh, I love it. Is it better than the hibiscus one? No, but, no. but it's still really good. <laughs> yeah, they're oh my god, they're so good. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, delicious, absolutely delicious. Um, but that's, uh, that's basically it for me on what we bought this week. Um, let me see here. All right. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and start bringing the show to a close. Uh, I think it's been a very wonderful conversation so far. Um, I also just want to like tease about the stuff that's going to come next. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that we're doing a Guillermo del Toro month. We're going to save that for uh, November. And uh, Peter came up with a new idea about doing a theme park series of shows for us, for the four of us on Red Spotlight. And this is the the twist here, where it's like, we have to come up with theme park attractions based on properties that have never been touched. Now, this is anything, Universal, Warner Brothers, any kind of film franchise that hasn't been, you know, translated into a um, attraction. Of course, we're going to open the door for it to be Disney as well. Um, 
but um we need to lay some ground rules on that because um <sighs> peter's already called dibs on some ideas so and we also <laughs> need to like i know <laughs> So we need to like have a, a serious discussion about um, what the rules are going to be like exactly and how many episodes are going to do. Like if we're going to do just like one and all of us has an idea or if we have several ideas and we do a series of shows. So that's also going to be like up for debate. On Fantasy Fair, we have more um, audio commentaries. Uh, we have one with Tangled that Alexis and I just did. And we're going to have one in the next few weeks with Zootopia, as well as the princess and the frog. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I know, right? We've been trying to do that for a while, but things keep getting rescheduled after the other. Uh, as well as reviews for Howard Ashman, the new documentary that'll be on Disney+. Plus. Um, probably by the time this episode already is online, so that'll be up on there. Um and apparently Mulan. Mulan. That's going to be a thing, too, which is crazy. We'll talk about it more in depth in the next week's show because there was a lot of stuff mm -hmm. in regards to it. I wonder how it's aging because I feel by the day, more and more people are coming out and really hating this news. Like, I was just watching, like, today I shared this article of, like, this <laughs> this French theater owner so enraged that he literally took a baseball bat and beat up the, the, the pop-out standout of Mulan. Um, because, of course, um, especially over there, the European and UK um, movie theaters are so pissed off, more so than the Americans, because there are no theaters, for the most part, open here. But over there, they're opening up more and more. But because it is going to be – because the UK does have Disney Plus, they'll also be skipping the UK theaters and going to Disney Plus for a, um exclusive purchase on there. So they're pissed off about that. And then more and more every day, uh, people are literally pissed off about ha having to pay 30 bucks for it. <laughs> like there's a lot of comments that I'm seeing like, oh, I, I wonder if they're going to – uh cave on that if they are they shouldn't be fucking complaining but it's it's gonna be an experiment to see how that turns out because i don't know one way or the other like how successful or not it is gonna be um because the problem with you know debuting something online is of course piracy and people are i mean people who are already paying like Disney Plus subscriptions. What is going to be more appealing to you? Paying an additional $30 to get access to this? Or literally just going on one, two, three movies and then popping it up and there it is for free. I mean, that's kind of the reality that's going to exist. And I wonder how much of an effect that's going to have on the sales for mm -hmm. for this. This is an experiment in the... That. That's interesting. I mean, it's an experiment in the truest sense of the word, right? Like, you really don't know how it's going to go like. But I would think that if you're inclined to not pay that 30 bucks, they're going to be ways to see that movie without having to pay 30 bucks. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. or, and then doing it yeah. as, like, a one-time thing also, like, not mm -hmm. rental? Well, that's... Okay, so from what... Again, we'll get into more details next week. From what I understand, so long as you have... A subscription to Disney Plus and you've paid the the uh, $29.99, you will be able to see Mulan as many times as you want. Mm -hmm. But if you lose the subscription, then you also lose Mulan. But at the same time, it's not going to go on VOD in the traditional sense where like, you know, you have iTunes or Amazon or what have you where you can rent it up there as well. I don't know if it'll ever go on there based yeah. on how they're sounding like. But also think about this. At some point, you don't, you're not going to have to pay 30 bucks to see Mulan. At some point, it'll just – the paywall will go down and you'll be able to see it for free basically. And not for free but with your basic – like there will be situations where people will, will be like, well, you know, do I want to pay 30 bucks for this now or do I just wait a few weeks for it to like be free at no extra charge? Or if you really want to see it now, torrent it. 
or piracy or some other like there are other ways to see it as well like there are a lot of options for people um that because 30 bucks is a lot for people who regularly rent movies through amazon or voodoo or on itunes it i mean a premium pi price is like 25 dollars. most prices range from 15 to 20 dollars for a new release um I guess the added benefit of paying the 30 bucks is that there's not going to be like a window of like 48 hours mm -hmm. uh, where you're like you're able to see it and then it goes away. Yeah. Um, but it is an additional price. I. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's very curious to see how it's. And of course, like the, the key with this, in case people are like would be uh, um, confused why movie theaters would be upset. Disney gets to keep all the money out of this all the money from this so <laughs> and that's why they've pulled the plug because they need some money coming in because yeah. not only um even the parks i think they're, they're very disappointed money. they're very disappointed with uh yeah. how little people have come to walt disney world which i mean i don't i, I don't know why you expected it to be any, anything else than what it is right now considering how florida is literally going down um literally climate change but then also you know COVID 19 and everything but um, yeah. Like, what do you think about all this? It's it's a, it's interesting. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. You have any thoughts? It's I do, but I feel like I am gonna save them for next week. Yeah. Yeah, cause yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot to think through. Yeah. Like, especially if you couple that with like the um, the AMC and Universal stuff. Um, and how like it's a very volatile time for the movie industry, which is what we usually cover, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, before we close, um, how are you and your family like this week? With um, are we even thinking about COVID anymore, or like, where are we with that with you guys? Um, I mean, yes. I mean, obviously, yeah, like, we're still thinking about it because it's still... We're social distancing. We're taking care of ourselves. Yeah, it's still... I, I guess my question was, has it come to the point where, like, you're so used to it where it's just, like, not a big deal anymore? <sighs> Again, yes and no. Yes, <laughs> because it's been so long of this already. Oh, my and God. It's... Our this is the sixth normal. month. This yeah. is the sixth month of this Half that we're. A year. Oh my god. It's it's our new normal, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like you can't really think about it that way when so many people are gone. <laughs> well, dead in the ground, right? Um, yeah, and, and dying as we speak. 2,000 people die today in this country. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, that still hasn't, like, set in. That that's a, that has to be something of a new record. That is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Um, but, yeah, it's just, like, it, it, the days more and more are bleeding together into one, you know, extra long thing. And, um, yeah, it, it's, I guess for me, like, if there's one good thing is that some days may be long, but the weeks are really short. Yeah. They fly by like nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, at least for me, um, there's enough between this podcast, between going on on walks or drives and or television shows that I can watch. It's been able to be manageable, but, um, it's just, sometimes I just feel like it's too much, um, especially on like people like my mom, like I see her sometimes and it's just like, she's just sad because of the situation. Like she, she works in, um, 
the hair industry and like that's never going to come back anytime soon like she's a hairstylist and it's very difficult mm -hmm. she's the kind of person that has to work to be alive and it's been very difficult for her um these last few months so but um i know and then recently like there was she was convinced she had covid for like a week she had a test it took it took like days like literally a week for the damn test to come back and she came back like negative so but because uh, she had a sore throat for a week like randomly yeah. but it wasn't like that was all that she had yeah that's that's also like a thing like we still don't know what the heck this thing is <sighs> you know mm -hmm. it's nuts I still like it it feels different now but it's not everything is literally still as it was back in march <laughs> well as far as like uh how the pandemic itself it's literally worse at least our lives and how we've adapted to address mm -hmm. it has stayed the same while things are getting significantly worse out there like yes. this week i'm seeing that the, the number of cases has gone down as far as like the spread of infections but death has gone up mm -hmm. so i don't know if that's and the problem is this and i know that we we um i know that uh you and i saw john oliver this week and you know to to kind of like touch on that what we said a few weeks back about schools and the lack of education and boy that was fucked up go watch john oliver this week that was an amazing job he did but the but since we're on the subject of COVID, I mean, even like the 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 semblance little bits of good news, like oh, okay, so maybe this week infections have tapered, they've gone down in some of the worst areas, and then of course, <sighs> certain schools across the country have opened. <laughs> And yes. in most of those cases, within minutes, if not hours, there are headlines that come out that somebody's test came back positive and now a whole bunch of people are quarantining. Not, li not even two days, not even a day back in school. And what's really frustrating about seeing these like stories that like, play out, it's like how predictable they were. Oh, and like people act surprised like, what a day and people are already getting infected with COVID-19 it's a school these are kids what do you think it's crazy even when things go a little bit good you're reminded of like they're never going to be good because of just the reality of this country the MLB is going down under, and yet they're continuing to go on with many of their players getting infected, but now they don't give a shit. Like, every single day, like, there was literally a news story last week where one of the first cruises to go back on sale had an outbreak of COVID-19. And it's like, yeah, because it was a good idea to think that you wouldn't get infected during, in a cruise, which was kind of one of the big reasons why it spread so quickly in the beginning of this, if you even remember that. And like you're reading these stories already of kids dying. There was a six-year-old, I think, in Georgia. Another one, another second grader that's getting COVID nineteen. Now that he's spreading it to somebody else, like a hundred students quarantining in Indiana because their schools have opened. Uh, and uh, some local institutions, private institutions, in in this area, in my area, are lobbying the governor. To try and reopen, because their argument is that they have so you know small classes of size class that they can um, class size that they can actually open. Anybody who thinks they can actually open right now, no matter what it is, is deluded, or they know what's going to happen and they don't care because they can't afford to stay closed. And whoever gets sick and dies, well, fuck it, right? Tough luck. Because that seems to be the answer I'm getting back a lot and a lot and a lot. Because no one seems to have an answer. Like, 
we can't be the only ones, Alexis, that, that sees like how obvious it is. Like you shouldn't open these things, especially now because the minute that you open them, people get infected and will ultimately lead to somebody's death. And why would you want to be responsible for that? Well, like with you, well, not like you, but in um in the valley they asked teachers to get their wills ready you mean wills who who said that um do you know i think uh where did i read it I don't know, somebody that I know whose mom is a teacher uh, put it out there that she that her mom was asked to get her will ready. I don't know if schools are actually going to open, but they were thinking about it, I guess. So, I don't know. From what I know, that, that it, was, um, it was something that was being discussed in one of... Um in a public forum in the past week or so by the educational um, organization. Um, Think about how offensive and disgusting that is, that we live in a world where anyone in any position feels comfortable asking someone to literally give up their life. Or be ready to sacrifice themselves just for their job. I can't believe that's real. I know it is, but I just can't believe it. Fuck off. <sighs> no, I mean, that, that, how else do you answer that? Get my will ready? Fuck you. You get your will ready. That's how you, if that's how it's going to be, then I'm sure you're comfortable dying then because that's the situation you're putting yourself in. Fuck mm-hmm. that. Come on. Then that is, mm. there was even, there was this teacher I was reading in some state that was fined, that she's being fined $2,000 because, because she quit her job because she didn't want to go back because of this whole COVID situation. Uh, think about the kind of think about the kind of world we live in if that's what's really going on uh, it's not sad enough my, it's go ahead one of my family members who is a teacher um they they're doing online classes um she said that i i don't ex- i don't know what grade that her school goes up to I want to say maybe sixth grade, so like kinder to sixth. Um, so only ninety nine students had signed up because uh, she also lives in an area where a lot of people don't have internet or access to internet or computers or anything like that. But ninety nine students signed up. <laughs> This it's pandemic, just, it's 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 sorry, no, it's, uh, go it's ahead. <sighs> like the thing with schools and stuff. I don't know, like, I don't think that there is a right or wrong way to do it. Because I mean, obviously, there is one wrong way to do it, which is to go back, but like, there's a lot of things that, like, I feel you know, people don't think about, like, uh, the family member that I'm talking about, she's a special needs teacher. Right. And it's like, you can't really do online with kids with special needs. Um, you know, like, you have to think about, like, like, not everybody is the same, like, not everybody can adapt to online learning. Um, not everybody has access to that. Like, it's just, like, a very difficult thing. But, you know, to force people to go back when they don't want to and to, like you said, ask them to get their wills ready. First of all, if you're asking 
a teacher, an adult to do that. What does that say about you letting these kids go back? Do you know what I mean? So you're a monster. You're a fucking monster is what you are, if that's what you're prepared to, you know. All those deaths are at your feet, and you're prepared to have that happen. Now, I'm going to respond to what you were saying about that. Look, this pandemic is just a reminder that in every way, our country is a disaster. And every kind of, when it when it comes to pointing out the flaws in our economy, the flaws in our healthcare system, and of course, in our educational system, there were plenty of flaws to happen. But from a structural standpoint, I mean, this just shows how online learning or distance learning was nowhere and is nowhere near the level that it I think was was made out to be at least at the mm-hmm. beginning of this it's, it has shown the cracks in just about every institution um in every kind of uh system of our government to the point where it is alarming to think that we held it together for such a long time with how crappy everything seriously is. And I agree with you what you're saying. But because you're saying that you are um, against completely with um, in-person learning does not mean that you're giving a pass to the inadequacies of the stuff that is at home. Like, the government should have already taken care of yeah, this. Yeah. The government should have provided no, yeah. free internet for everybody. Agree. They should like, have you had... funded the educational system to have all of these things set in place. But they what did that say? so yeah. much time mm-hmm. to think about this. Like, what it happened? feels like nothing happened. It feels like nothing was set in place. Like, I don't understand. I mean, we're talking about the same people right now who at this moment are closer to having no agreement on renewing stimulus checks or unemployment benefits in the middle of a pandemic. (laughs) Because even that is too much. So this is just a reminder for people to wake up. Vote out these bums. Get people in there that are actually going to fix these problems because it's just a reminder, like these people in power in Washington, either they are terrible at their job or you have to just think that they were just there to keep the status quo in place in any situation. Because it, this country is a fucking disaster. From a structural standpoint and a governmental standpoint, it is a fucking disaster. It really is. And it is terrible, of course... Of course, like, people out there who are good intention want to say, well, we need to get, we need it, we need our kids to be educated. First of all, of all your education ain't that great to begin with. So let's, let's not make it out. <laughs> let's not make it seem as if it's like the end all be all. Okay. Not when we have schools out there that have like slavery theme monopoly games for our, you know, for our kids. <sighs> so fuck you. If that's what you think, that's the gold standard for education. And seriously, if you're a college student, do not even bother paying any of these institutions like Dude. UCSD or any. Do not oh even bother God. paying them or giving them any any money. Fuck it. Go to online, online classes at your local community college. Do that. Do not give them any money for not even getting the experience that is already overpriced to begin with. You need to hurt these institutions where it hurts them particularly and save yourself the grief of having to be that much in debt for getting nothing out of it so it's just and i've gone through these things and it's just like take it from me it's not worth it having your entire educational experience online even if you're in higher education but when it comes to like kids in elementary to high school look you have the worst of it because no Nothing they can do is going to be any is going to be good. It's all it, it, you're basically as far as like what the options are available anywhere in the country. It's varying degrees of shit, whether it's like decent shit or or terrible shit. That's kind of like the level that we're operating on. So, no one is saying here that uh, this is going to be uh, a, a smooth ride, right? 
but it would be wonderful if we were even at that point where we've decided to not have any in-person classrooms. But we can't get past that because now beginning with this week, for the next few weeks and maybe for the rest of the year, these idiot schools have decided to reopen. And what do you fucking think is going to happen? It's, it's things like this that make our inevitable escape from this hellish nightmare delayed longer and longer and longer. And perhaps what is most frustrating about this pandemic is not the fucking virus itself, is the people in charge and our, us ourselves for how inadequate we are and how we are causing our own frustration, our own destruction. Yep. And that's not even getting into people who are lying about whether or not they're sick, <laughs> if they've been tested, if they go to work while they have a test pending, which renders testing useless. That's to say nothing, of course, of the fucking idiot we have in the White House who thinks that just because we have great tests, that's why we have so many cases. <sighs> I mean... <laughs> So, um, vote in November and vote for the guy that's going to take this pandemic seriously so we can get the fuck out of our houses. That's all I have to say, because that's that's really where, where this all ends. Um, so, yeah, that's my TED talk. Anything else to add, Alexis? No, I think you said it all. Great. Um, so, yeah, we're ending this all fiery and everything. Great. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you, Alexis, for being here. I thought it was a very wonderful conversation, and uh, hopefully, listeners got to you know get to know you a little bit more. Um, and hopefully, we do more of these kind of shows as the year progresses. Um, thank you all. We have more podcasts coming your way next week. We'll, we'll be back with Peter, and of course, the series finale of Shield is coming. And actually, now that I'm you know realizing it and saying it out loud, this is the very last time. I'm going to be able to say this. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Wednesday at 10 on ABC for the last episode. After years and years of saying it <laughs> to the objection of many on this podcast, um, uh, there it is for the last time. And of course, we'll be here to cover it. David and I will be here to cover that uh, in all its glory and more. And of course, our podcasts every Sunday and every Thursday. Fantasy Fair every Friday. And until next time, Bye-bye.